Whoa, what up? Shout out to the replay viewers and what up to the live viewers. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? This is the student master teacher, Mr. I Stay Woke, Chris Cashflow, Money Monroe. And I'm about to do some real estate follow-up calls. Hopefully, um, somebody wants to sign a contract today. And I feel like somebody needs to sign. Sign a dotted line. What's up, Big Mike? What's up, Miana? What up, what up, what up? Good to see you. So, yeah, I'm about to uh, get on here and call some people. So, we got several leads came in today via cold calling. Happy New Year to you, too. Happy 2024. Good to see you. So, yeah, we uh, got a bunch of leads in. And we're going to see if it's something cooking. So, if you could hit that little plane. I don't know if it's right there or right there. Hit that little plane and share it to a friend of yours. Who loves real estate? And please hold. Hello, thanks for calling. Yeah. Yeah. Not the lobby, the drive-thru. You don't need to go in the lobby, the drive-thru. Oh, okay. You know, there's another one right there at uh, Butler Hill and 55 inside that schlitz. Unless they change that one too. Yeah. Seven o'clock used to be. Hold on, let me check. Butler Hill U.S. Bank. Give me a second. Let's check. Uh, let's see here. Is that it? Butler Hill. They are open. Uh, I can't tell here. There's too many things here. Oh, Schlitz Branch. Uh, it doesn't tell their times on here. So, yeah, that, there is one right there, though. 55 and Butler Hill. Okay. All right, that'll work. Thanks. Give me excuses. Drop my damn money out, boy. So, yeah, a late tenant, as usual, making excuses on why they ain't paid. Oh, the bank, they drive through clothes. Boy, I drop that money, y'all stop playing. But back to the medicine at hand. What's going on? A lion's world. Rawr. I see ya. So, yeah, I'm about to make some uh, real estate follow-up calls. Some leads came in today, and I think a couple came in yesterday. But I've been ripping and running and running and ripping all day, so now I gotta stop and make these calls and see if somebody wanna pause. So, let's see what we got here. So those that don't know, my name is Chris Monroe. It's the student master teacher, Mr. I Stay Woke. And uh, we're doing some calls here. And uh, let's see. I'm out of St. Louis, Missouri. I do some wholesaling. I do some creative finance. Buy subject to buy. Uh, my specialty is foreclosures. Preventing foreclosure and buying your house. So don't let the bank take it. Let me buy it. Put some money in your pocket. And if you know somebody need that, send them our way and we'll make sure you get some pay. So the house I'm looking at here um, is a three bedroom, two and a half bath house up in Florissant. Hey, um, they say they want 430,000. They already bought a new home. And uh, let's see here. The roof is about eight years old. It's empty already. Um, the reason for selling, they already bought a house and moved out. They want to sell ASAP, asking price $430,000. Um, additional notes, would consider taking a monthly payment if there's $100,000 down. You say, that boy look fresh. Oh, a little bit, you know what I'm saying? That's a little something, not really. <laughs> Just a little fresh. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to call this guy up. But let me check something real quick. Is this a guy? Yeah, somebody named Paul. I'm going to give him a call. Um, let me see. What can I find? Let me pull this up on the MLS real quick before I call him because I can't tell what he had it listed for. But I can tell that it was they've been trying to sell it for at least six months. So there may be some motivation, it may not be, but that hundred thousand dollars down that ain't gonna work. I can tell you that already. I don't even like that purchase price, that's ridiculous as well, to be honest. But we're gonna talk to them, we're gonna see if they're serious motivated. If they're seriously motivated, we're gonna make a deal. If they're not, no harm, no foul. So, yeah, it looks like he's the only owner. Wow, that's a beautiful house. If that's really the pictures. Hold on, let me pull it up. I might be able to show y'all, too. Let me see something. 
Damn, that's a nice house. Hold on. You want to see it? Do y'all want to see the house or no? Because I'll flip it around. Let's see. I'll flip it around. Let me see what I got here. Flip. Look at that house. Ooh Built in 1989. It's the same age as you. It's your age almost. Shoot. For your young bucks. 80 babies. So, yeah, that's what it looks like. It's a three-car garage. It looks like it got a lot of land with it. Here's the aerial view. Aerial view. Looks like it got some land. It's out on a plantation somewhere. My boy said he want 430. Just made up a number, huh? That is a beautiful house. But, oh, even the inside looks good. Let's see if I can show that. Let's see if I can hold that still while flipping pictures. By only showing what I want to show. Because, you know, there are some little thieves out here. They wouldn't do it. I don't like that floor in that living room or whatever that was. That vinyl flooring or whatever that is, that's kind of out of date. Kitchen, it looks okay. Nothing special there. Fireplace. Open kitchen concept. Beautiful house. So, yeah. But really, I don't even like looking at the house, to be honest. I know everybody else likes looking at them. I don't even care what the house looks like. I care about the problem of the seller and can I bring what's called value. So, let's see. What else can I find out about this house real quick before I call him? Uh, I can't tell what he had it listed for. It doesn't say on the MLS. It say expired listing on here. But it doesn't really tell. Or maybe I don't know how to tell what they had it listed for. Doesn't matter. We know it didn't sell in six months, so we're going to get him on the phone and see if he's home. Let's get Paul on the line. Like an office number. Uh, 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 uh. Let's go. What up, real estate? Lou, what it do? Help you? Hi, yes, I was trying to reach Paul. He's not available right now. This is Pam, his assistant. Can I help you? Yeah, I was giving him a call about his house in Florissant. He said to give him a call back. He wanted to sell it okay. ASAP. Hang on just a second. Let me get it. Perfect. Uh, Hello? Hey, Paul. My name is Chris with yeah. with St. Louis Cash Buyers. Looks like you spoke to my assistant earlier today about your house in Florissant. How are you? Yeah, fine. How are you doing? All is well. So, yeah, I'm actually the buyer, so I wanted to get back with you so I can, you know, finish up any final yeah. details, see if we can get you an offer, and actually get this off your plate. Uh, did, did you have a few moments? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect, perfect. So, yeah, uh, what's going on with the house here? It looks like it's a really nice house. Um, anything I need to know about it? Yeah, it's nice. It, uh, Jack is like uh, uh, seven years old. The roof is like eight years old. And uh, the model kitchen, uh, five years, six years ago. Yeah. Oh, okay. Are so, you talking about your house? I'm sorry, what was that? Are you talking about 3636 Absari? Yes. Yeah, your assistant called me, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely interested in buying it. Um, would I need to do any kind of updates or anything to it, or is it just pretty much ready to go? No, it's, uh, like I said, we put a uh, ceramic uh, tile in the family room and the dining room, restaurant, the brand new carpet painted. And uh, uh, Jack is uh, like... Uh, Seven years old, eight years old, and the uh, roof, same thing, and the kitchen, same thing. I can the top, you got a granite counter top, all that. Perfect, perfect, Paul. Um, so it looks like it's in really good condition. It looks like it was listed yeah. for a while. Do you know why it did not sell? Uh, that's my own house. I, you know, I moved and I have had to re rehab it for a while, and then. What happened is the guy wrote the offer on it, accepted everything, and then at the closing, that was last month, at the closing, and he didn't want to deal with the lender. They were charging him all kinds of points. Interest rate was high. Then he didn't want to deal with it. He wasn't happy with his agent, and then with the deal, uh, loan company, too, and he walked out. He doesn't want to be closed. We went by the company, closed it. But the buyer didn't close. He lost his earnest money. Wow. So they backed out at the last minute? 
Yeah. Wow. You know, it definitely happens. It ain't over till it closes all the way. You know that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So if we were able to work out everything as far as price and, and things like that, uh, how soon would you be looking to close on it to be done with it? One week. In a week? Oh, week. wow. You're not messing around. What? His house is vacant, you know. Yeah. And we don't want a house to sit vacant too long. You know what happens with those. Yeah, I don't care. You know, I just put it to go off the market because of Christmas. I'm going to put it back in the market. As a matter of fact, a couple of agents, they got to buy it for it. Oh, really? I, put in, I might put it out next week, put it in the market. Yes, sir. So you're planning on listing it again and putting it on the market and see what you can get out there. Right. Okay. Well, the good thing is, if we were to buy it, you would no longer have to pay any real estate commissions or fees. Whatever we pay for I'm, it goes in your pocket. And I'm going to uh, I'm listing it for four twenty, and I have it for four twenty. So you're going to and list the property people. for four hundred and twenty thousand. Four twenty, and then how did you uh, come up with that amount? I'm just curious. The house is around it. The one the house is just uh, half a mile from it. Sold for four sixty five. Is on the contract, and then the other one sold five seventy exactly. The one sold five five eighty three, but that one is had a, a little a pond in the back. You know, they, the same square for the same thing. They sold five eighty three, and then one in the, down the street sold one for four thirty five. Smaller than my house, that's a, a comparable. They're like next six months. Perfect, perfect. That's okay. So that makes sense. So let me ask you this, Paul. So if we were to go ahead and just buy the house, no real estate commissions or fees, whatever you are as a price? 405. 405, and you'll be out of there and done, yeah. huh? Yeah, I give it to you as you take it. You know, I'm not fooling with that. Yeah, because I know a lot of times when you put it back on the market, you have to deal with those lenders and all of that stuff. So that's definitely a lot, right? It's by 30 days. The other one was 30 days closed. And I had two, three offers before that. I just said, they were offered to FHA, you know. Oh, yeah. FHA can be very tricky. You know, they got a lot of things they want to check. Real estate. I've been real estate 45 years, so I know where. Everything. Oh, you've been in real estate 45 years? Wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, I got to ask you this, Paul. Is there any tips you can give an up-and-coming real estate investor in 2024? Anyone can give you yeah. tips or advice? Yeah, it's going, to, it's going to be good because uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, bank foreclosures might come out. Oh, Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, I've only been in since 2018, so I haven't been in as long as you, yeah. but we definitely seen the market shift around. Yeah. Now, I'm looking over my notes here, and it says that you would consider taking a monthly payment until we paid you off in full. Is that correct? If you pay $100,000 down payment. Oh, wow. 100000 down? Yes. I take 25% down. I financed it myself for three years. Oh, wow. You already got all the terms lined out. you definitely been in real estate a while, huh? Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, as far as something like that, we typically want to get in around, you know, under 10% of the entry fee. You think something like that would help you out and get it sold quickly? Yeah. What happened now? I'm, yeah. I, I'm saying what? in... Yeah, when we usually structure these creative financing, seller finance type deals, we usually want to get in under 10% of an entry fee. So if we came around that amount down, you think that's something that would help you guys out? Mike, I got 20%. That's 80000 Yeah, I mean, that, and I'm just trying to make, you know, I'm just saying what we've done in the past because we've done these creative deals. We actually do them all the time, to be honest with you. And that's really where you can get the most bang for your buck and get the house sold. No sure. contingencies or anything like that. So, I mean, sure. I've done all kind of owner financing, everything. I sold a shopping center. I sold apartment building. I sold mobile home. I, I sold over 7,000 properties. Wow. So I know everything, you know. So do you have any other houses you're looking to sell or just this one? Uh, I've got other houses too, but you know, 
you are not a good buyer, you know. That I I know that lady call. I get a call like that every day, you know. Did you say I'm not a good buyer? The lady, you know, was telling me this stuff. You want to do question? We got. I could show the house and write the offer, you know. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, we're definitely interested w in buying it, but you know, I want to, you know, you're an experienced investor, so you understand, you know, we got to buy it right from the very beginning. We don't want to get in over leveraged, especially when we don't know what the market's going to do in an election year. With yeah. a, you know, you, you got. That, well, what, you said you want to buy it for yourself, living it. No, sir. We have real estate all over St. Louis, just like you do. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 this house would definitely be too big for me. We live not too far from there. We live in Hazelwood area, so not too far from you there. Yeah, that's a nice house. Drop by and look at it. So it's what's... Like 42 by 42, turn around in the back, sitting all the way in the back, nice set up. Three-car garage, you know. And if you're real estate, go just come look at it and what mile from there. See how, what they sell it. Oh, yeah. I'm looking over it now. I just pulled it up. So let's say if we were to buy it and um, you said if we did like 10 percent down, that would that's a no go for you. Is that what you're telling me? No, no 10 percent. No. No. Nope. OK. I had bad experience. OK. 20%. So I guess it's probably better just to put it back on the market and see what you can get for it. I was just trying yeah. to see if there was something we can do to help you out. No harm, no yeah. foul. So did you have any other properties that you think would work better for us? No, I don't have any. Yeah. So all of them are not for sale now or what? Yeah. No. All right. Well, I'll just check back with you in a few weeks, see if something changes. All right, Paul? Yeah, okay. All right. Have a good day. Bye-bye. There you go. The seller that knows everything. They can't sell a damn house. <laughs> Hold on. Somebody would call me right now. Hello, and thanks for calling. Hey, is this St. Louis Cash Buyers? Yes, how can I help? Hey, it's Ken. Um, yeah, so I'm a real estate investor I'm in the area. I actually wholesale properties out there in St. Louis. So, uh, you know, if I, or I do have access to properties um, under the market value, would you be open to doing any kind of business? Well, we definitely are looking for properties all the time. We buy quite a bit in town here. Are you ha you have anything under contract right now? Yes, I do have something under contract currently. Um, so yeah, let, let me kind of ask you, what, what areas do you typically like to buy in? All over St. Louis, on the Missouri side. I don't buy in Illinois, okay. but on the Missouri side. You got something in the St. Louis area? Yes, I do have something in the St. Louis area. It is a duplex. Are you fond of that? I love duplexes, fourplexes, triplexes, all the way down to single family. We love them all. <laughs> I get it. I get it. All right. Awesome. Um, so, yeah, I guess I'm just kind of wondering here, what's kind of your minimum profit or, like, ROI you need on a deal? Yeah, so if you can get it, you know, 70% or, or below a value cash, we can buy it that way. Or we also buy houses creatively for those that have, you know, little to no equity. We are able to structure creative deals to buy houses subject to seller finance, et cetera. We stop foreclosures for people. We're a full service real estate company. So if you have anything that, you know, even if something that doesn't make sense to normal people, bring it. We'll look at it and see if that we can make something happen. Gotcha. That's fantastic. But that's the answer I think everybody wants to hear. That's right. We br just bring me a problem in real estate and we try to solve them. That's what we're looking for. Problems with real estate. We want to solve them. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, I commemorate you for that because uh, there's not many of the uh, uh, Mohicans left. You know it. You know it. So, yeah. Are you able to just send me what you have as far as uh, what you have available now? Yeah. Yeah. I can send you over the details and um, I can send you the comp too uh, that we ran. So that way you can just kind of look at the comparables and do your own research. Um, what's kind of a good, what's the best email for you? Would you mind text messaging? Yes, sir. It, it's actually in your email. It's in your text message right now. If you look at your phone, beep, it just hits you just that quick. <laughs> gotcha. Fantastic. Well, yeah, I'll send you over the details um, and we'll, we'll see what we can do. Perfect. What was your name again? Ken. And like I said, I'm Chris with St. Louis Cash Buyers buying your house for cash. Send it over. We'll take a look at it, okay? Okay. Sounds good, Chris. Thank you. Bye-bye.
So that was a wholesaler popping in. Now, how I got that call, I don't know. We still got VAs on for another hour. How they didn't get that call, I don't know. But I was here, so I took it. So what do y'all think about that first call? That guy was a know-it-all. He knew everything. Well, I've been in real estate 45 years. Why your house ain't selling in six months, sir? Yeah. But money. Let me change his name in here. Ken Wholesaler. Change it in my system here so when they call me back, we got them who we got. So, yeah, that's the kind of stuff they talking about. Um, he knows everything. Oh, I got 7,000 properties I've done. Boy, get off my phone. He ain't talking about nothing. Somebody going to put it back on the market. Find more leads than you can even process. That's multiple listing service. That's the MLS for your real estate agents. Absentee owner information. Find the cash buyers and flippers in any market nationwide. Pull a pre foreclosure list. And don't forget, you got to find those comps. Get nationwide access with multiple filters powered by PropStream at WokeSource.com. Get your seven day free trial today. WokeSource.com. That's WokeSource.com. And he would consider taking a monthly payment with 100000 down. Yeah, right. I don't even think that house worth that. 405 is more like what the house is worth. Somebody want 420. He told my VA 430. I get on the phone with him. He tell me 420. So I'm like, oh, you going the right direction. So I ask again, and we get him down to 405. Did you like that? That's what you should have been looking at. How do we get him down from that number they started at? Because whatever they started at, we're not paying that no way. He loves this house too much. It was a beautiful house. I'm not going to lie. But we don't overpay for houses. It's a luxury home. Those, if you're talking about wholesaling, it's a whole nother ball game. It's not the same. Um, it's a luxury home, you know, different type of buyer, different type of clientele. And that stuff in that house really was not as updated as he led on to be, as we saw in the pictures prior to the call. So welcome to the replay viewers and welcome to the live viewers. I see you all jumping in. Um, let me see. Let me scroll up and see if we had any questions about that. Let me scroll up. Uh, let's see here. Somebody asked, um, where did you get that lead? So that lead was a call. So we pulled a list of expired listings, meaning they were on the market. And for whatever reason, it did not sell. So we just called them back to see if they were still interested in selling. Our biggest pitch is when you sell to us, there is no more real estate commissions. That money goes in your pocket. He really didn't care about money, as you can tell. So my questions usually are framed around figuring out what they're trying to accomplish. And he's just looking to try to get the most he can, it looks like. And he's open to creative. He's done it, he says, but I'm not giving him no damn 25% down on that. You're crazy, my man. 100000 down? No, sir. No, sir. Where are we going to make money at? Not me. So that's how they did that. Uh, any other questions? Put them in here. I'll try to answer them real quick before I get on the next call. Um, I have a problem. What's your problem? Uh, Shan Shan Chantel the Candles? I have a problem. You got a real estate problem? Bring it on. And Tamika says he loves his house too much. He does. Do you mentor and create a finance only? Uh, I solve problems in real estate. Bring the problem. I don't even, even if I don't know the answer, I know how to go find the answer. I don't know everything, but I know a little bit about everything. So bring the problems on. Andrea. Oh, okay. And you do have a problem. Uh, let's see, where do you pull expired listing from? Straight off the MLS, MLS access. If you're not a real estate agent, get become friends with a real estate agent. Have them pull the list for you or get their access and, uh, you know, be a wink, wink assistant and go pull the list yourself. So we try to pull that list about every week. And I pulled this list like the last 10 days of last year. So like everybody that ended their listing agreement on the 31st of December, I guess, all the way back to like a week before, like the 22nd through now, basically is what we pulled that list. So it's like two weeks or a week and a half, whatever it is. And it was like 400 people. I was like, damn, that's a lot. So a lot of people listing expired right at the end of the year. So we rode with it. Um, let's see here. I found a house with a deceased owner and it wasn't willed to his kids and hasn't gone through probate. Mm, and he's got multiple kids. It sounds like that's a problem. Not really a problem, but it could all be solved. Um, is somebody living in the house? Is it vacant? Are we able to get it? Um, I have a slew of questions to go around that because depending on the situation with the deal, um, they could do what's called a affidavit of airship An affidavit of airship. We have those here. I don't know if they have that in that market where you can go around doing a probate and still get the deal done. 
but don't have anything to do with it. They don't have anything to do with it. And it's vacant. Do you have any contact with any family member? Somebody has to be a point of contact there, a representative for that property. And it's in New Jersey. Oh, wow. One of those blue states. We love those. Let's see here. Claudio says, do your properties cash flow enough for you to draw from or do you save it all for maintenance? Maintenance? Claudio, you want to know a secret? We don't do no maintenance, baby. No maintenance. Virtually no maintenance. I don't want to say none, but virtually no maintenance. My favorite exit strategy is a lease option where we pass on 100% of the maintenance and repairs to the end tenant buyer. We ain't maintenance and no properties. We cash flowing, baby. Call me the bank. All the money goes in the hip pocket national bank. So if we keep in a property, we're typically looking to exit on a lease option. A lease with an option to buy. If that doesn't work, we can do a midterm rental, a short-term rental. Uh, some people like that pad split stuff. All type of other exit strategies other than traditional rental. Traditional rental is not my exit strategy of choice. No. That's like, it's got to really get serious. Yep, pretty house. That's what we roll, baby. We love it. Blue states are good for wholesaling. They are. Like Illinois. No, you can do one wholesale deal per month. Those blue states are the ones dropping all those laws on you wholesalers. But that's a whole other story. Not going to get into that rabbit hole. Uh, let's see here. But he said the brother bought it for bought it for him and loaned the money. So I don't know if the brother got the property back. Yeah, we probably need to uh, hop on a call or something and see what's really going on with that. Because it sounds like it's a lot of moving parts with that, uh, Andrea, about that deal there. Let me see here. Uh, Claudio say, why not a wrap? Why would I do a wrap? If I do a wrap, I actually sold the property, meaning I no longer own the property, which means I don't get the tax benefits of owning real estate. I want to retain ownership, lease it to somebody, where if they don't act right, we can get them up out of there, simply evict them versus going through a whole foreclosure process, which has a whole slew of other rules and regulations that I don't want to go down here right now. Not to get on a tangent, but I got to get back to these calls because I got some other people in here. Let me put the notes in for this guy right quick. See what he was talking about. Uh, this house in Florissant where he was trying to get 430 then 420 would accept I'm putting in notes except 405k 100k down on terms Sound like his assistant was in the back the background, like uh, giving him the answers to this stuff. Did y'all pick up on that, or was that just me? It sounded like there was somebody back there just like going. And that wholesaler that called right after that call sent an email. He just texted me and said, "I sent the email." Hey, Chris, I sent the email. So okay, so they're trying to bombard me with stuff right now at the same time. That's why you have to make time for this stuff to say, "Hey, I'm locking in on real estate for two hours, no matter what. Two hours of real estate a day." I'll keep the doctor away. So for those just jumping in, my name is Chris Monroe out of St. Louis, Missouri, doing some real estate calls, trying to see if we can get a deal locked up and dealing with the other distractions of that thing called life. Um, let's add him and put his disposition as what? Follow up later in a month or two. Uh, future follow up. And we're going to say, um, I don't know. What do we call that? Uh, we're going to say he wants too much, wants too high of a price. And we're moving on. Who's next? Next lead. Next lead. What up, Music for Life? What up, BK Mayor Mike Jones in the building? All right, that was uh, Paul. We got a Christopher in here. Ooh. And his house is in Webster Groves. Okay, now we cooking. Oh, this is a good lead, I think. Lead is moving back to Alabama. Did some updates like siding and flooring. Minor repairs. Roof is around 10 years old. Not listed with the realtor, but planning on listed with, planning on listing it to a realtor. He owes around 60 to 100. I don't know what that means. Somewhere between 60 and 100,000. I don't know. These notes are kind of weird here. Um, asking price. He's not really sure yet. Uh, call back anytime after five. Is it after five? It's after six. So he can be called. So let's call Mr. Christopher and see what he's talking about. Matter of fact, let me do a quick look. A quick look-see to see what we can do on numbers, just generally. So this lead came, this is a paid lead. This we this came from uh, 
YouTube marketing, YouTube ads, this lead came from. So this is a better lead, in my opinion. Typically, when we get a lead straight off the internet as a inbound, like, hey, I'm going to fill out a form and I want to sell my house, those are usually better leads. And we it came in, I think, today. So we're getting back with them today. I'm ready to get them a contract today. He said he don't know what he want to get for it. I'll tell you what we'll give you for it. That's why I got to check these numbers. He's one of those I don't know sellers. So it's him and a wife listed on here according to the MLS. Looks like they bought this house for $142,000 back in, I don't know when. doesn't tell on there. But they paid $142,000 for it whenever they bought it. Um, damn. On here it says this house worth over $400,000. So yeah, if you want a list of all the paid lead sources I recommend, wokerealestate.com forward slash marketing. Wokerealestate.com slash marketing. It's right on my website. Every system that I use is all right there. Wokerealestate.com. And it say, I want marketing. Click that button. It'll give you a whole list of what I use on a regular basis. Um, But yeah, this house is worth about 400000 Damn, I knew it was worth some money. And they only owe hundred. So sheesh, what do you want to sell it for? I need to go hurry up and sign this dude. We got equity. He said he don't know what he want for it. I don't know what that's about. Let me look on another site real quick just to see what these houses really go for. According to the MLS, it says that. But let me check Redfin real quick. My favorite site. That's my favorite free site, by the way, Redfin. Because you can pull up these properties and actually see solds right in the area. Is this it? That ain't the house I'm looking for. Somebody got a house listed over there for 425 right up the street. Come on, computer. Don't do this stupid stuff. I usually don't like to do too much research, but this person's talking about, oh, I don't know how much I want. And that's one of the four pillars. You know, when you're talking to these sellers, you know the four pillars, right? Price. If you can get a price out of them, they get you a starting point. See where their mindset is. Price. General condition. I don't really care too deep about condition, but price, condition, timeline. If we're able to work everything out, how soon would you like to close? Very important timeline. And then finally, motivation, which is the most important of all of that. Motivation. What's going to happen if what's supposed to happen doesn't happen? Why can't I get this property to come up on Redfin? Am I putting in the wrong address or something? Hold on. Redfin. And then put in the address. Let's see if that comes up that way. 720. Is that address right? I think the address wrong or something. Because this keep coming up as, oh, it's coming up on Zillow. Let me do this again. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Because this house, it say, Zestimate say 364. So that's probably more realistic. 364,000 Zestimate on that house that I'm about to call. Uh, let's see here. So that's another good way to kind of get a value of a property. The three sites, Zillow, Redfin, and Realtor, because they spend all the money to know what these houses are worth. Zillow, Redfin, and Realtor. And then go in, add, add them all up, whatever that number is, divided by three. That's your ARV times 0.65 minus your fee. And you know you got a deal. That's the quick way to evaluate a property. Don't take a lot of rocket science. Don't have to overthink this stuff. And you can do it in two or three minutes. So, matter of fact, I'm going to write that down. Zestimate was 364 since I'm on Zillow. Realtor is... To my down, I don't know what they want for their house. Boy, I'll give you 100000 Don't play with me. I'll throw a number at you. Why is this address not coming up on these other sites? It came up on Zillow, but why is it not coming up on any other site? Is something funky with this house? Or am I putting in the wrong address or what's going on? No, that's the right address. I ain't going to worry about it. I'll underwrite it some more in the event that this seller wants to really play ball. So let's give Christopher a call. His name's Christopher like me. So should, when I call him, should I say, hey, this is Christopher looking for Christopher? Or do I say my name's Chris? Should I be Christopher or Chris? Put it in the comments. Christopher or Chris? Which name should I use when I call Christopher? Let's see. We're going to call him. Let's get his number together here. Pull it back up. Boom, ba-boom, ba-boom, boom. Use Christopher. 
<laughs> hey, I'm Christopher. How are you, Christopher? Hey, I, I never knew anybody else go by Christopher. They really call me Chris. Oh, never mind. Say, Bob. All right, let's see what we got here. Let's put that on there. Let's call him from my pretty house. All right, let's give him a call. Call has been forwarded to. So let me ask you this. If you call somebody and they don't answer, what do you do? If you call somebody and they don't answer, what do you do? Dust yourself off and try again. Let's see here. Call them again. Double tap. Give them about 10 seconds and then we'll call again. Call back. That's right. Ramirez knows it. Give him a call back. Double tap. Double dial. Double dial, triple dial. And he just, well, actually this lead was spoken to yesterday. It wasn't spoken to today. I thought this came. It came in yesterday. And let's see. I'm going to try to call him again. Mr. All right. And five, four, three, two, one. Call. Triple dial. Your call has been forwarded to an automated voice messaging system. Kit West. Oh, he don't even use, he don't even go by Christopher. He go by Kit. Is that short for Chris? He said his name was Kit on the voicemail. Huh. I think that is short for Chris, ain't it? Or is it? I mean, how are you going to shorten Chris? It's already short. He said his name was Kent or Kit. Oh, well. He'll call back, I think. We're going to put his name right here. So if he calls back, I'll be able to um, at least answer the call and know who that is. Next lead, this is why I don't like to really research them too deep before getting them on the phone. Because sometimes that happens and they don't answer. So let's see who else is in here. It's a house over here in Florida, Ferguson. They want 90000 all cash, they say. Huh? Then you woke up. Ferguson. Is this Ferguson West? No, this is Ferguson... I wouldn't say necessarily the good part, but it ain't the best, the bad part. Let me go back one second here. Put that on this dude. Um, I'm gonna put on here. Didn't pick up. I could have left my voicemail, but it don't matter. I'm gonna go to the next person again. So there's one in Ferguson. We got a three. No, I'm sorry. A two-bedroom, one-bath. Reason for selling, relocate. Closing time in 30 days. Asking price, 90000 This lead came from an exp that expired list. That same expired list. Now, why didn't it sell when it was listed? That's really, in real life, that'd be my number one question. Why didn't it sell when it was listed? You went out to the marketplace and they told you no. So, evidently, the price is too high. So, looking back at the history here on Zillow, They've been trying to sell that house since October of last year. They listed it originally for one hundred and twenty thousand. Then they dropped it to one hundred and ten thousand. Then they dropped it to one hundred seven five. Then it went pending. Then I guess something happened, and then it went back and listed on December twentieth. And then the listing was totally removed on the first of this year. So, yeah, something funky going on here. And what is that tinging noise I just heard? I thought that was something else. What CRM do we use? WokeReply.com. WokeReply.com. CRM, calling, texting, voicemailing, all in one package. All for one low monthly payment. 
WokeReply.com. So the Zestimate says 100000 So, I don't know. Let me look this up real quick on Redfin. Your favorite site, even though it didn't show that other address I was trying to look up. Um, they say 138 on Redfin. Oh, this has got some pictures of it on here. Hmm. I wonder are these pictures current. A little shotgun style kitchen. Uh, let me let y'all see it a little. Oh, let me see. Not that. What did I just put on? Oh, a face thing? We don't want to do that. So that's what the kitchen looks like. see what else they got on here old bathroom grandma bathroom that have to be re-updated I mean I don't really have to update it but if you're gonna spend some money you might as well update all that nice little dining room it's a cute little starter home look like it's fresh if it looks anything like this backyard little playpen in the back for somebody to bust their head on stuff like that So yeah, that's what we got. A little cute little house over here in Ferguson area. <sighs> Let's see what we got. I'm just going to call him up. What's this person's name? Shamika. What up, Shamika? What up, Mika? How you been? I got to talk to her like I know her. Mika, this me, this Chris. How you been? Uh, let me look. Did I look on here? I did not put that into the MLS. Because sometimes you get some other information like loan information, etc. on the multiple listing service. Um, what was his address again? Why is it not coming up on the MLS? Q. Oh, there it is. No, that's not that. I need this. Search. What the hell? Why some of these properties not coming up today? Am I on the right address? Oh, I'm on the wrong address. Duh. The address wrong that makes a difference if you put in the wrong information how are you gonna get the right information no it's still acting weird this address says let me do this again copy why I keep popping up a different address other than what I put in it there we go all right there we go okay I'm looking like why this thing acting stupid computers are only as good as you are how good are you? So it's saying on the multiple listing service that the property is expired. And she's an only owner, so that's good. We don't have to deal with no husband. She bought it for $75,000 back in 2018. This might be a good deal for a subject, too. In real life. Because, yeah, it's real close to that asking price. And I know she owes about that much. She bought this house in 2018. So what's that? Four years ago? Five years ago, six years ago, five years ago, December 8th of, of 30th of 2018. So, yeah, this is a great subject to do if she's open to it. But we don't know if she's open to it. We're going to talk to Miss Shamika. All cash, she say. Let's get her on the phone and see if she's home. So give this video a thumbs up. Give it a like. Give it a share if you care. Copy and paste. And record a call for quality and training. <clears throat> so one. Did the phone call drop? What just happened? Double tap. Is this the right number? Yep, dial the right number. Hello? Hello? Shamika? I don't know what's up with that. I called her twice and that's going to some kind of beeping thing. 
What's up with these people not answering their phone? I guess when you get a call now, no. Because I think this is a good subject too, dear. Because if she owes around 75 and she's trying to sell it for 90, she's just trying to walk away. I'm just going to give her uh, like seven grand say sign the house over to me. And what was her name? Shamika? Hey, Shamika. This is Chris. Your house. Send her a text message. So I sent her a message say, hey, Shamika, this is Chris. You spoke to my assistant about your house. Call back when you get a chance. Thanks. So hopefully she can call back. And then we're going to say her two, three. Uh, 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 uh. So we're making some follow-up calls from some leads that are in the CRM that came in between yesterday and today, since I almost never have time to call these people. Um, what site are you using that they submit inquiries to? To our website. We have multiple websites. We have sites. Can I tell you a secret? I don't really like to tell this stuff on the internet because people be listening. You know what I'm saying? Then they be knowing how you play the game. And I did this back when I had a cleaning business. Uh-oh. Somebody just oh, they're calling back. There's Shamika. Please hold. We got a caller, y'all. Hello, and thanks for calling. Hey, Chris. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. How are you? This Shamika? Great, yeah. How are you? How's it going? Um, so far, so good. Well, that's good. That's good. You spoke to my assistant, it looks like, yesterday in regards to your house over there in Ferguson. Um, did you get it sold yet? No, not yet. Well, we're going to make this. I was, uh, that, that's part of the plan. Getting it sold will be the ones to buy it if everything makes sense. Uh, what's going on with it? Um, anything I need to know about it before I buy it? Um, yeah, I was trying to sell it as is because there is some uh, outside work that needs to be done because it's half wood and half brick, so it, uh, the exterior needs to be painted, and then the uh, garage door needs to be fixed. So it needs some light repairs? Correct. Okay. And you want to sell it as is? You don't want to dump any more money into it, huh? <laughs> Uh, no, if I'm done, if I put the money into it, I'm just going to keep it. I know that's right. Well, that's the good thing. We do buy property as is, regardless of the situation. So um, a little bit of work does not scare us off. Uh, it looks like it's uh, pretty good there. Um, now, I was looking online there, here. There is a, um, there's a creek over here, so it is in a flood zone. Now, I've never had a flood. I had a flood in 'Cause they put a check valve in and I haven't had any issues um in years. So Oh, okay. So has, was there is there a problem for other people trying to buy it, getting insurance and things like that? Um, the company in which I was doing it with, they said there was some other uh, people that were looking at it that was a concern, but I mean I provided them with the information. It's not a problem getting insurance, you can get insurance just fine. I got insurance fine and it's a decent price that I pay, so Oh, I didn't okay. have any problems. Like I said, I've never had a flood or a backup from the creek itself. The only time I had a backup was uh, when I first got here, but that was through, that was because of the sewer line, which got fixed. Oh, uh, okay. Perfect. Yeah, that happens. You know, glad, at least they fixed it because, you know, sometimes that stuff gets put off for a long time. And so um, I'm just trying to figure it was listed, it looks like on here. Do you know why it didn't sell when it was listed? Okay, so the company, uh, when I went online to look at it and see what they showed, they had it listed for, I think, 107, but um, I wasn't trying to get anything less than 90 because I put money in it, because um, I put a sub pump in it and a brand new roof on it. Also, new gutters on one side because there was water coming in the house at one point. So um, I was trying to get at least that amount. Um, it was an investment company trying to do it. I wasn't aware that they had it out there for 107. The offer, I did get an offer on it, which was for 80. Uh, the person had an FHA loan, which the investment company, they were they were going to um, do all of the repairs. So I guess that's where the additional 20000 would have gone. 
for them to do the painting and fixing the garage and whatever little nicks and nacks the uh, buyer wanted to do. Oh, yeah, they do that sometimes. So the person with the 80000 um they, uh, they, they backed out. And they they said they backed out because of the outside need to be painted, but that was already in their contingency for it to be done. And they were getting ready to send someone out to do that. So I don't know what the other, what the real underlying issue was, but that was what that person said it was. Yeah, I can definitely understand that. So let me ask you this, uh, Shamika. In the event we are able to agree on the price and everything, I mean, when would you be looking to close and be done with this property? Uh, as soon as possible. I would uh, ask that I get at least like 30 days to move everything. Oh, okay. So you're still living in it? Yeah, I'm okay. still living in it. Okay, perfect. And you already found a place to move to and stuff yet, or are you still looking? Yeah, so... Uh, my, it's my mother's home because she's planning to move out of town and her home is already paid for so I don't have to worry about her mortgage payment because I'm affording everything I just don't have anything left after I have all of my expenses so it's just becoming too yeah. much from when I first moved in here just a lot of things have changed since then yeah, I can definitely understand that. So in a perfect scenario for you, how do you see all this playing out? What would be best case scenario for you? I mean, I assume that you all would need to come out and look at it and do your own, like, uh, formal or informal inspection, and then we can, I guess, negotiate from there. I mean, there is, like, some rubbish, but these are, like, cut down trees, so they just need to be tossed out. But, I mean, I guess we would have to go from there for you all to come out and look at it and give me your, you know, take on it, and then. Mm -hmm. So, any event. started if we agree on something. Yeah, perfect. So say uh, we were to come in and buy it, um, and, and it looks like here you say you want all cash. I mean, if we came in uh, below that 80000 is that something you would even consider? I, I can't hear you now. Uh-oh, can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can, hear, I can hear you now. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, I was asking, say if we were to do our due diligence and research and everything, and say we were to come in under that 80000 I mean, is that something you would even consider? It wouldn't make sense. How much you still owe on it? sense and we definitely wouldn't want to do that to you we want to make sure you get the most you can so basically it sounds like when it's all said and done you're trying to walk away with say give or take around ten thousand dollars in pocket would that be a perfect scenario for you correct well i mean i don't know if it will work for your particular situation but what we have done in the past in similar situations as yours is we were able to actually give the seller, you, actual money to walk away from the property. We would leave that loan in your name and we would take over those payments where you would actually be able to move on and not have to deal with that house anymore. You think something like that would help you out? No, I don't think I would want to do that. If I, if I do decide to do something like that, I'll probably... Well, I probably won't go to the option at all. Um, if all else fails, like I said, I'm saying the property, I want to eventually still try to sell it again, but I will probably wait two years to let me make, to, for myself, to make the necessary changes to the house with the painting and the garage. That way I can then say, hey, this is what XYZ has been done, and now what can I get for it? So I'd rather do that. And so so you saying you would... So you're saying you would hold the property and rent it out to somebody for a few years? Is that what you're saying? No, I was just going to stay in the property and then just try to come up with the funds to 
just do the necessary little renovations and then try to resell again to see if I can get a better deal at a later time. Yeah. And that would be a roll of the dice, just to be honest with you. We don't know if the market going to go yeah, up, down, or sideways. <laughs> so, 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 putting some money in your pocket, taking over your payments, not having you having to deal with this house anymore. Um, I mean, what about that? Really, would not work for you. Well, you said the loan was still staying my name, correct? Yeah, and it's called um, buying your house subject to the existing financing. And it's just it's just a strategy that we use that in the event that somebody needs to get money out, like in your case, um, it actually would work perfect for your case because you would actually be able to get the money you need, not have to deal with the repairs of that house, not have to do any maintenance repairs, tenants, dealing with toilets, trees or anything else dealing with that house. And you can move on and do something different in your life and not have to deal with that house anymore. No, I don't want to do that option. Okay. Not a problem. I, I appreciate it, but it's not something I would be interested in. Okay, not a problem. Well, I can still get you an offer on this here. To, I'll, I'll do some numbers on it here this evening, and I'll send you a, an offer for it either way. Just so you have it in your back pocket, just in case you know something changes. Okay, um, no problem. And, I appreciate it. All right, you have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Let me send her a text. She says she do not want to do that and didn't give a real reason. Because of the loan staying in her name. <laughs> That's your people for you. But it don't matter. You'll get desperate and you'll be back. You can't close these deals on the first time. Just to be honest. You know, everybody that you talk to. Now, this lady says no, right? We're going to come back later two months from now. You'll be like, oh, I remember that call. She said no. Why is she going to come back to me in the end? But I want to send her an offer either way. She left me a voicemail in here. Let me send her a text right quick. <clears throat> I'm going to send her that text to let her know. So I have a generic text already made up. It was great speaking to you today. Learn more about us at our website. Please send the best email address for you, Chris. And that's what she's going to send back her email address. And that's when I'm going to send her the multiple offer strategy with the lowball offer, probably 60 grand, which I know she can't take because she owes about 67K owed. But did you like how I got that price out of her? How much you still owe on it? I didn't say, oh, is there a loan? Oh, what's this? Oh, what's that? No. How much you still owe on it? Confident. Boom. And shut up and let her answer. Silence is golden. Sometimes you have to let them talk. Like even when she said no originally to the deal, I let her say no. And let her say justify why she's saying no, why I'm on mute. Uh-oh. Did she write back or call back? Somebody did something. Um, let's see here. What is the benefit of the loan staying in her name and you owning it? Great question, Ramirez. What is the benefit of the loan staying in her name and me owning it? One, I don't have to go qualify for a brand new loan and start over a brand new 30 years and pay all those closing costs and fees and appraisals and all the red tape you get to buy a house. I don't have to qualify for the loan. It's already qualified. And now, I don't know what her interest rate is and all that other stuff. We'd have to underwrite that and see what makes sense. But the biggest thing is it's already got financing in place. I would more than happy. I'd be more than happy to give her five or 10 grand or walk away, depending on the rest of the deal, if it makes sense, and just take over her payments. So I will have a house where my entry fee would be less than 10%. And as we saw, the house is worth somewhere between 100 and 120, somewhere like that. If we give her seven to 10 grand, which I would really be shooting for around seven is my real sweet spot from what I'm hearing because the house needs some kind of repairs. We don't care about their repairs because I ain't doing the repairs no way. I'll put it under contract, market it to a tenant buyer, get somebody else in there, use their money to close the deal. But I'm getting too deep in the rabbit hole. Just keeping it simple like a pimple. So for those joining in, my name is Chris Monroe, STL out of St. Louis. And uh, my offers on this particular deal will be about 60000 cash, which I know she can't take. And then I'll offer her um, 77 on term, something like that, 10000 in her pocket, just to see what she say. And then I'll lock it up, and then I'll renegotiate it later. See, I don't even care about locking up a property because... I can still renegotiate until closing. Just like she said, she had it sold, so-called to somebody for 80, and she thought she was gonna walk away with about 13,000. And we steady trimming that away. The house needs work. I don't mind a little bit of work, a garage door. What's that, a couple hundred bucks? Flood zone creek, that may be an issue, but we're gonna deal with that. And then she said it needs some outside work, like some paint or something. So we can do that work. Three, four grand worth of work. 
It's nominal value. Or don't do any of the work and put at least option tenant buyer in there. They give me the same or more than what I put down into the property for them to move into a house. Now, this is a little starter house. These types of deals usually work better when they got more bedrooms, more baths, because this property is a 2-1, so it's a little starter home. If this was a three, two and a half, it'd be a lot better. But with it being a starter home, we can definitely get it going from there. So hopefully that works out for you. Boom. So there we go. So any other questions about that particular deal right there, that particular observation? So I guess what we'll put in the CRM, and I'm using Podio too, so I, I lied earlier. I used two CRMs, if that ain't enough. <laughs> Double CRM. So uh, let's see here. And they all work together. Podio. And they used to be free. It costs money now. Yikes. So we're going to say... Doing due diligence and follow up. Let's put it here in the notes. O's 67K wants 10K in pocket. Not interested in terms at this time. She has a lot of faith in herself. I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna fix it up and do this myself. You'll be back. You're going to come out here in that real estate game. going to show you that it ain't easy. You got to know what you're doing. So let's see here. Once too high. And I'll put in here 80,000 cash. I think 80,000 cash too high. But it don't matter. I didn't want to give her a cash offer. No way. When I came into that call, I already knew we going creative. If she's just trying to pull out about 10 K, I'd rather give her that and take over the house, especially if she got a good low interest rate of 2.2%. I don't know if that's what it is, but it could be. All right. Anybody else on the list right here? I'll put her in as a follow up. We'll follow up with her in about what a month. And I haven't even sent her an offer. Let's follow up with her. What is today? One five. Let's follow up with her on two five and put it in there because I think she's uh, motivated a little bit even though she might be playing tough right now time straightens everybody out you know what I did want to know I didn't get to ask her a very important question why is she moving to begin with what made her decide to move I think she mentioned it saying something about she couldn't afford it or something to that effect but um, I should have dug a little deeper into that. But it doesn't matter. She's not interested in terms. So that's really all I want to know. Can I pitch you these terms? All right, moving on. Who's next? How long have we been on this call for? 62 minutes. Damn, y'all been on here a long time, man. Who on here from the beginning? Let me see who in here. We got Alliance World. We got Jarrell up here. AK in the building. Clockwise. Angelo Ramirez is still kicking. Mike buys houses. Jonathan or jo Johan is still in here. What is that, tea? Mm -hmm. Is it nice warm tea? Mm -hmm. Wow, I got nice warm tea. And Tamiko. So y'all still hanging out, okay? Hanging out. Friends to the end. All right, what's this next deal here? Forestdale, Missouri. Where is that at? Is that far? Let me look this up. This sounds like outside of St. Charles. They want $450,000. And they already sold all their other properties, it says in the notes. Zestimate says 358 right off the rip. So that 450 is full blown retail or more. I don't even know where this is at. Four stale. And where did this lead come from? Let me get some of these windows closed. I got way too many open. Uh, four stale. Three bedroom, one bath, 2,100 square feet. Where is Four Stale, Missouri at? Fix all these other junk out. Got a lot of windows. For sale. That sounds like that's out there in the sticks. This lead came from that expired list. That same expired list. At least we're getting people that do want to sell. Don't mean it's going to work out. Put them on a drip campaign. Um, 
Roof 10 years old. It's vacant, three bedroom, two bath. But Zillow say something else. Zillow say three bedroom, one bath. He says it's a three bedroom, two bath. Okay, once 450. Uh, he owns two properties there. The third, the house in three acres and next to it is 4.5 acres. Hoping to get 450,000 for everything. Consider taking a monthly payment, but it depends on how long it takes. Let me see where this damn forest of Missouri is at. Is this somewhere I want to really buy in? Sound kind of far. Sound far. Here the map. Let me pull up the map. All the way out off Blues Highway, wherever that's at. Let me zoom back. Wright City, Missouri, Wentzville. Okay, so that's north of Wentzville between Wentzville and Moscow Mills, Missouri. We just did a deal in Moscow Mills, as a matter of fact. So this may work. This may work. This is in our target zone. We can still do something here. You may have heard the saying, the fortunes are in the follow-up. Now there's a brand new system that is great to help you cold call, text message, drop voicemails, and so much more, all automated. You don't have to remember anything. Just set it and forget it. All you have to do is speak to people. Check it out, WokeReply.com. It's a multi-touch marketing campaign where you can schedule to send text, voicemail, email, and even live calls all on autopilot. Check it out today, WokeReply.com. That's WokeReply.com. So he don't want, he want 450 for everything. Let me read this again. He owns two property there, the house and in three acres next to it. I don't really want that land. I just want the house, to be honest. Um, and hoping to get 450 for everything. Would consider taking a monthly payment, but depends on how long it takes. At least he's in the right thing. Now, do you like that my virtual assistants ask that question? Would you consider taking a monthly payment until we pay you off in full? They're either going to say yes, no, or what do you mean by that? That's the only three answers they can give you. Sure, hell no, or what you mean by that? That's the only three answers they can give. So once we get that answer to say yes, he would consider it, uh, my ears perk up. Ooh, we got a possibility for terms. So let's see what he's talking about. Um, 450 ain't going to happen on that house, to be honest. I mean, we might be able to structure a deal with both of them. I shouldn't say no. I probably wouldn't want to buy this house. It's kind of far, but I know people that buy out there. So for those of you that's doing wholesale deals, you know you can wholesale these creative deals as well, right? Just like you wholesale and cash deals, you can structure and create a creative deal and wholesale it off to somebody like me that wants to buy it. As long as you get that entry fee at an affordable amount. Under 10% is preferred at a low entry. Low entry fee, low interest rate. Uh, you can sell those wholesale as well and get a fee. Ask me how I know. Daryl. Is it Daryl or Darrell? Maybe Daryl. You think it's Daryl or Darrell? Which one do you think? Daryl. Lil Daryl. My name Lil Daryl. You see what they say about Ricky Smiley from Cat Williams? <laughs> <laughs> My name Lil Daryl. He said, you ain't funny. So let's call Mr. Daryl. I'm not even going to try to say his name. Some of these people, I don't even like to call their name unless they tell me what their name is. Because I don't want to mispronounce it. Daryl. And this was yesterday lead as well. Came in yesterday. This is Daryl. Hey, Daryl, this is Chris. You spoke to my assistant yesterday in regards to your house you're selling. How are you today? Good. How are you doing, Chris? Good, good. Did you have a couple moments? Yes. Yes. Perfect. Okay, perfect. I was looking over the notes here and uh, looks like this is a pretty decent house. Um, It, it, it was uh, listed before, right? No, this house. Um, which house are you talking about? What, uh, uh, North Point. Yeah, no, that wasn't listed for. I've had that for about twenty years. Oh wow, twenty years. Mm -hmm. So, what made you decide to want to sell it now? Um, to be truthful, I bought sixty acres down the road that I'm putting a subdivision in. So I'm just kind of. I, I had uh, ninety three single family homes that we sold all last year over in North Town. Wow. Um, back of properties, so we sold all our homes. And this was one of my personal houses that I had. It's the last one I got left. So um, I just was going to take that money and go put down more on my the ground that I bought. So you do full-blown development. You don't play around, huh? Well, I just started getting into that. I, I always did a uh, first thing I started out with 30 years ago was buying houses and flipping them. And then we got into the rental department. Um, and then uh, I still work a full-time job at Ameren. So it was uh, 
we just it was just to the point where it was time to unload the houses. The market was good for the North County area, and we sold them, and then we kind of uh, I bought a big piece of ground, and I'm gonna slowly develop that over the next couple of years. Wow, that was smart to you know get out while the getting's good. Now people wishing they sold yeah. when everything was up before, well, right? <laughs> we, we we got out, and then the investors that bought our properties, uh, Section Eight raised all their rents up like two hundred dollars a month a house, so. They got like eighteen thousand dollar a month increase the first month they took over. <laughs> wow! Instantly, <laughs> that's crazy. They weren't doing uh, inspections, you know, to give us our rent increase. So, mm, and they went right in and just got free money, huh? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, but it, it, it was it, everything happened for a reason. So, yeah, it's nothing the wrong with that. So cool. Now, this piece of property, though, the reason I bought this piece of property there was right down the road. There's all new subdivisions. I don't know if you're familiar with that area out there or not. We just closed the deal in Moscow Mills, not too far from there. Okay. Well, right, right on, on down the road here, within a quarter mile, there's gas. There's already gas running in front of the property, but there's sewer and water right down the road, quarter mile. So what my plans were to, I, that's why I didn't really put a lot of money in this house over the years, because I was just planning on waiting for sewer and water to get there, and I was going to bulldoze it down and put a, a cult stack right down the middle and put all kinds of villas on each side. So that's, that's why I kept that ground for so many years was for a future development. Yeah, that would be smart. I mean, if something changed, you don't want to do that anymore? Well, I need, I, I'd rather take that money and pay my other property off. You know, I, I paid quite a bit of money for that at 60 acres. So Yeah, um, got to get something back. Down the road, it'll, it'll pay off more down the road for me and my other piece of property. Makes perfect sense. Now, it says something in here that you would consider taking a monthly payment until we paid you off in full. Is that correct? Um, I, I told her that I didn't know what that monthly payment would be and how long. I need to kind of know some more details on that. 100%. We can definitely figure that out. Um, let me start here first. Uh, it says you're selling. Are you selling two properties or just one house at that same location? Uh, well, there's a house. Are, are, you, are you able to bring that up on the map at all? Yeah, I'm looking at it on, well, let's see here. Let me see if this is a map. Yeah, I'm looking at the map now. It's on a lake or something okay. right there. You see the uh, house and it's got a pole barn there with a bunch of cars. Mm -hmm. That 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 is like three three acres there. It's all fenced in. The back is. Do you, do you see that property there where it's? Uh, it's that's a, like three buildings. Like Darryl, Jennifer Taylor. That's like three buildings there or something like that. Yeah, there's up there's a house and then a two car detached garage. Okay, yeah, house. I see it. Yeah, it's a lot of cars. So okay. That, that, right. He he's a. It's a friend of mine that's been there for like 12 years. He's been works on cars, but he's leaving his lease up in June. So I offered him to buy it, but he just can't afford to buy it, so he's going to move out. So his lease is up in June. The house, I have a bunch of the guys that work for us that they're in Mexico right now on a work visa. They come back every uh, March, and then they leave in uh, November. So their stuff is still in the house, but come uh, March when they get back, or June, whenever somebody buys it by June, when the other leases up, I'll move them out into a different house. But so all their stuff in there right now, so I couldn't really. Uh, I mean, I can take it all out if I had to. Somebody closed before then, but right. they have no idea that I'm selling it. Is that right? No, there's one house in a shed. So oh, it's a house in a shed. Two rents. I rent the house out to the guys, and then my buddy rents the shop out, the shed out. So oh, wow! Going. So this thing's a cash cow then. Well, I get twelve hundred for the house and four hundred for the shed. Which the shed, he's been doing. I said it's, it's worth way more than that, but he's been there for so many years. I didn't ever raise his rent up because. Yeah, that's the only thing about real estate. When you hold it a long time, you're like, well, I don't really want to yeah. raise it up. <laughs> right, and then I, and then if you look if you look at that piece of property, you see the L shape that runs beside it, goes behind it, and to the left of to the right of it. Yes. There's four point five acres there. Mm-hmm. Do you, does it say Becca Properties owns that? Uh, I'm just looking at the. I'm actually looking at the uh, Google Map Street there View right now. There's a building way back there. Is that a part of this too, or that's something different? No, that's somebody else's house. But there's a uh, there's 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 an additional four and a half acres there, which is a total of seven acres altogether. If somebody for the five hundred fifty thousand, there's there's seven eight seven and a half acres there. There's two two. I own the house in three acres, and then. My company owns the house in four and a half acres. So I was going to sell it all as one one piece. So you want to sell it all as one big unit and be done with all of yeah. it versus... Just because 
whoever buys that house is going to want it for the future development. Same thing with that four and a half acres. Whoever buys that's going to want it for the future development. Mm -hmm. If you don't own both parcels, the neighbor might not want you to put put houses there. You know. Yeah, you can get one of those neighbors that's like, I don't want it over there. Right. And so you own all seven and a half acres and you control whatever goes on there. That's and we've had that for. That's the reason we kept it that way. So you would want to sell that one. Offered two hundred fifty thousand for the four acres. You know, a year ago, and we didn't take it from one of the neighbors that wanted to build in there. But for that reason, I didn't want them shutting me down later on down the road. Yeah. So I decided to put up villas in there. So you're playing real life Monopoly out here. Oh yeah. <laughs> and so it says here you were looking to get four hundred and fifty thousand. Is that for both of those units, or just what is no, it? No, it was five fifty for both. Five fifty for both. Yeah, three fifty to for the house, and then two hundred. For the four and a half acres, three fifty for the house, two hundred. I think I told her four fifty for the house and three acres, but I really want five fifty for everything. So two hundred for the four acres. Would come down on the right. Okay, so it wouldn't it wouldn't make sense to sell them separate. You would only sell them together. Is that what you're saying? Well, I, I just I just got a feeling that whoever buys the me, yeah. I mean, I, I guess it all depends. I guess it really talk to my wife, but. To me, I want to get rid of both pieces of property. Just I, I don't want to keep the empty lot. If, yeah, you when, know, if, 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 uh, okay. if possible. And I guess what is that zone? That extra four acres over there? It's the same as that house. I don't know what that zoning is. Agricultural A three or something. I don't remember what that is off the top of my head. Residential though, we can't. I mean, we have to get a rezone for the build. Anything on it? Yeah. Well, the building is not really commercial. There, it's just. You know, he's just working on his personal cars. So anybody asked. Okay. But I am right now that uh, driveway going back to Amherst substation. Okay, perfect. So, and, and I do know the top of the road there, 2000 Ferris Road, they just listed that for uh, three acres for 250000 There's no water or sewer there either. You know, we got a well and an electric on this one. So, so if you were to sell the house and the four acres, you're looking to get five hundred fifty thousand for all of that and be done with it. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Uh, um, and that five fifty price is that the uh, actual best you could do on it? Um, most likely, yes. I mean, uh, like I said, I, I know I was offered, I was offered two fifty for the house and four acres like a year ago, and uh, we didn't want to sell. My partner at the time didn't want to sell the ground because we own because I own the house. But now that we sold all our other properties, that's the last piece of property we own. So I'm ready to to move forward. Yeah, makes sense. And so I guess those the tenants or the person living in that house that's leaving in June, um, you want to sell it once they're gone, or you want to sell it with them no, in place? No, I mean they're they're in Mexico right now, so I can have their stuff out. It's just the guy in the shop. It's oh. Until June, you know, because he's gonna take him that long to get rid of all the cars. His lease is up in June, so he'll have everything gone by June. Okay. By June first, his lease is up June first, so everything's got to be gone by June first. And he's not planning on staying at all. He's ready to go. Huh? He can't afford. Uh, he can't afford the five hundred fifty thousand dollar rent. You know what rent would be for something like that. Yeah, because it's gonna be like that, you know? going up. Yeah, better to get him out of there and start over, huh? Right. Well, uh, we would definitely be interested in this. Now, as far as um, you know, structuring something more creative. I mean, we usually buy with nothing down. Okay. Right. Uh, I'm sorry, you what now? I'm sorry. Yeah, I was saying we usually buy with nothing down. Okay. And how does that work? I'm not really familiar with that. Yeah, so so uh, basically what we do is we agree on a price. We go through the closing, through, through the title company, just like any transaction. Uh, we go through the title company. They transfer everything. And we just have to structure, you know, how the monthly payments would go. We take full responsibility for the property going forward, maintenance, repairs, anything that deals with the house. We would actually transfer ownership. And, we, and you would basically be elevated from a landlord to basically begin be, becoming just like Bank of America. Yeah, see, that would I kind of need that money to pay out close to a million dollars on my other piece of property. So I need as much money as I can. To, I can't. Depends on how long you're thinking. A couple months, six months, three months. I mean, as far yeah, as a uh, as far as a, a down payment, I mean, how, how much cash do you really need to make you know make it a good beneficial deal for you? You mean to sell as, it as a as a down payment? As a down payment. Um. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not interested in owner financing at all or anything like that. I, I know once my wife puts it in the MLS, it's going to sell. 
So you don't want to do anything creative with it. Okay, I got you. No, not like that. No, if, you, if you're interested in buying it as is and you're sitting on it or you trying to make more money on it, that's fine. But to me, actually, being the wholesale, to being the, uh, you know, holding it while you guys are trying to sell it, I'm not, I don't want a part of that. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not saying to do anything. I'm not talking about a wholesale deal. I'm talking about actually us buying it and we're doing whatever we're going to do to make money with the property going forward. You just become the lender where you get, all you do is collect checks. Your new job would be to collect checks and that's it. No work. Yeah, I don't know if I'd be interested in that to be truthful. Like I said, I, I know it's going to sell. My wife's actually a real estate agent. Once we put it in the MLS, it's going to sell. Yeah. We, we, I'm already done. No got problem. i crazy coming out here in the next two weeks. Um, I got foundation or concrete guy coming next week to redo the sidewalk and the front porch. Makes perfect um, sense. Did you have any you other know, ones that you would sell that are uh, uh, other properties? Not, not, not that way. I mean, for cash, I would, but not for, not for holding no, either way, we, that's just another strategy. We don't have to do it that way. I got, we, I got 30 acres right across the highway that got listed already for 1.8 million. You have that's any actual, uh, from there. you have any single family homes or one to four units, no, anything like sold, that? We sold all of them last year. You got rid of all of them. Wow. Yeah, we had 93 of them all in uh, North County. Yeah. Okay, so let me see what we can come up with as far as uh, something for this, and I'll get back with you. Yeah, uh, like I said, if you want to... Uh, come out and take a look at it and it's a lot of, I mean sometimes it's easier to look at things than what you've seen online or on the computer or. makes perfect sense so so yeah Daryl like I said my name is Chris with St. Louis Cash Bars any other questions for me for now before I let you go no I appreciate it like I said just keep me posted alright that'll work thank you bye bye alright Chris thank you bye bye we're going around in circles. Yeah, I would take payments. No, I don't want to take payments. Yeah, I would do that. No, I don't want to do that while you do a wholesale. What the hell are you talking about, man? <laughs> it's stuff funny to me, but I don't really want to waste too much energy on that. Let's get off of that because he's got a lot of stuff going on there and land and all that. I'm not, you know, unless it's a deal, I'm not really interested in that's like retail price. Really, he says he wants $550. Let me change the notes. $550K. And my wife's a real estate agent, and she's going to do that. But well, I wonder how that came off the expired list. That don't make sense, do it? So let's see here. I can DM you. Would love to have a chat with you from STL, born and raised. Cool. That's right. STL in the building. Yeah, I'm born and raised in the STL as well. How long have we been on here? 81 minutes? All right. Let's see. Probably get another one more in, maybe. Maybe one more. So let me go put in here in the notes what's going on with this deal. Once too high, as most do. Um, and it's really not vacant. It's tenant occupied, occupied until June 2024. Uh, what else he got here? A house, 350 for house, and how much? K for four acres of land next to it keeping it moving boom put them in a the follow-up and keep it going so welcome everybody to just jumping in if it's somebody just jumping in this is the student master teacher mr i stay woke chris monroe and i'm right back at you with another real estate video um we're talking to some people i wonder why that christopher got in called me back that's weird shamika we spoke to her daryl we spoke to him um, what else? Who else is in here? It's another house in here, but it's like in a hood. It's kind of a junk house. I can call them, but I don't think I want to mess with them. So we did Shamika, Christopher, Paul. Did we speak to Paul? We spoke to Paul. Who's Trayvon? Is this new? Oh, this the one in the hood. $30,000 house on the north side. I mean, I'll give you like eight. I don't even want to give you that much. Let's look it up first. Let's don't predetermine anything. Let's always look it up. This is over here near 70 and Kings Highway on the north side, 63115. Um, the house is occupied. I don't know if that means he's occupying or what it says occupied. Uh, three bedroom, one and a half bath. The reason for selling, he just recently moved. That doesn't make sense. Or does it? Came in five hours ago, and the lead... Oh, it came in on our main line. So somebody called in through just regular organic traffic. We always find these junk deals through our organic traffic. Where can we get the good deals through the organic? We're just coming on our regular website. Nobody paid nothing for it or nothing. No lead paid. 
Let me see if there's something else on here first because I don't really want to call that. I will, but let me double check. Make sure there's nothing else on here that looks more appealing. You really shouldn't cherry pick your leads. That's kind of a bad habit. Here we go. Something in South County. Another expired listing. They want $230,000 all cash. Market value $222 according to Zillow. Um, this was on the expired listings and this came in yesterday. So this is somebody from Vaznia. I can tell by their name. We're going to call Adnan. I guess that's their name. Adnan. But before we do that, let's do a quick little research first. Let's see. So, oh, that's a beautiful house. Not really. It's a little three bed. It's a three one on here. What did he say it was in the notes? Three one. So they got it right. Uh, Zestimate says two hundred twenty two thousand. Seller wants two hundred thirty thousand all cash. And why didn't this house sell before? We don't know. Listing removed. So it looks like they've been trying to sell this house since September of last year. They listed it for two fifty. It didn't sell. They dropped the price to two thirty. It didn't sell. And then it was pending. Then it came back up, listed for sale for two thirty again. Then it was removed on the first of this year. So why did they remove it? That's what I be want to know. Why you list something and then remove it? It's some lemon tea, hot, warm lemon tea. In this cup, it keeps it warm. All right, let's call three bedroom one. And I have houses in this area. I own multiple houses in this uh, Afton area, South County, 63123. So I kind of know the market. That's about retail. That is retail, 230. That's full-blown retail. No question about that. But we're going to call them and have a conversation anyway. Mr. or Mrs. Adnan. I don't know if it's a man or a woman. Adnan. Agnes. No, this ain't Agnes. I don't know who this is. So let's call Agnan. Uh, and they want 230. Wait a minute. What was the last time they listed the property? Didn't they drop it down below 230? No, 230 was their last price. They had it two fifty, then they went to two thirty. Oh, let me look on the MLS real quick before I do that. I always like to see if I can find another little clue that I can hit them with a surprise question. I always think, what are the best questions you can ask a person? Can you ask good questions, or do you just give good lessons? Oh, snap. Fudge, copy, MLS, paste, search. So this is owned. This property here is owned by that one person, Adnan. Not a multiple persons so they are expired yeah expired listing they bought it I think like in 2001 for a hundred thousand no a hundred and thirty thousand hundred thirty two thousand but they paid for it uh, and they got a loan on it of about a hundred thousand or less so they got a lot of equity they trying to pull that money out for sure just wanted to get an idea of what they owed on it. So it's not low equity. And it's usually better to target the low equity deals, but I don't target anybody. I just talk to anybody who wants to sell. You want to sell? Let's see if we can help you out. So let's call Adnan. Copy. Go to the dialer. And pay. Record the call. Ad Adnan. Hey, Adnan. Hello. 
Hey, this is Chris. Yesterday about your house on Heidelberg. All right. Did you get it sold yet? No. Okay. Yeah, we're definitely interested in buying it. Uh, like I said, my name is Chris with St. Louis Cash Buyers. I was just trying to figure out, is there anything we would need to update on the property or anything as far as repairs? Or is it pretty good condition? Oh, uh, it's in excellent condition. Excellent condition. My favorite type. Great. So it uh, looks like a pretty good house here. What made you decide to want to sell it? Uh, I'm just selling it. So you really don't are you have... One of those, are, you, are you one of those just uh, investors or kind of... What well, I actually buy houses. I have several in Afton, not too far from you there. Um, and I'm looking to add three or four more here in the next couple of months. Um, okay. just, just looking for another it's house two, to buy. It's 230000 Okay. You think this house is a good property for an investor or? I don't care. You, you say you don't, you say you don't know or you don't care? I don't care. Um, what happens if you don't sell it? What do you mean if I don't sell it to you? Uh, I'm just saying if you don't sell it at all, what's going to happen? You're going to rent it out or something? or? I'll sell it. I'll just start selling. I'll sell my house. Okay, perfect. So in the event we are able to agree on pricing and everything like that, how soon would you like to close on it and be done with it? It is 2 30 230,000. That's fine. You say 230, I'm asking about closing timeline. If we're able to do everything and get everything like you like it, when would you like to close on it? Oh, whatever it takes. A few weeks, three weeks, four weeks. Okay, perfect. And then how did you come up to that $230,000 purchase price? How did you come up to that? Oh, I have it in my mind. Are selling around for that amount of money, so I think it's a good price. Okay, makes sense. And so this one's already empty, or are you still living in it? No, I don't live in it. So it's vacant? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, so I'm just looking at it here. I mean, if we were able to come up to that $230,000 purchase price, would you consider taking a monthly payment until you were paid off in full? So all cash is the only way you would sell it. Is that what I'm hearing? Uh, yes. Yeah. Is there any wiggle room on that $230,000 purchase price? A um, couple thousand if we don't pay for the realtor agent. Yeah, so that's one of the good things. If you do sell us the house, there are no real estate commissions or fees. So the price we agree to is actually the price that goes in your pocket. So, um, okay. I'm, and I'm looking over it here. So if we came in and say, I don't know, if I, if I sent it back to my team and they came back and say about a, 180000 what would you say to that? Screw you. You would say screw them. <laughs> I know that's right. So you really, you're stuck on that number at 230? Yeah. Okay, no problem. Just thought I would check with you. I got another call coming in. Thanks for taking my call though, all right? All right. All right, bye-bye. Zero motivation. I almost got him to open up a little bit, but he ain't talking about nothing. Get that dude off my phone. Whack him. Hurry up and whack him. People like that don't waste too much time. He said, I had that number in my mind. How did you come up with that number? That number was in my mind? Damn. Well, 290, hell. Pick another number. Pick a number out the sky. <laughs> but, you know, that's how these people do. Get them off my CRM. He ain't talking about nothing. I meant to ask him why didn't it sell when it was listed. But, you know, he ain't really got no motivation, so it don't really matter. When you have zero motivation, I don't really want to spend too much energy on you. Zero motivation. I don't think he speaks too good at English, too, though. What do you think about that call? What's up, Joe? What do you know? You on the phone now with Chris Monroe. So I'm about to wrap this thing up anyway, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Give this video a thumbs up. Give it a like. Give it a share. I'm about to roll up out of here and do some more woke stuff. I guess one of those two people that I did miss will call back. I think there's a couple others in here, but I'll get them probably in the morning. You can only do so much of this stuff. How much stamina do you need? Yeah, 230 is over retail. That house is worth about 215, 220. He wants more than retail. And it's vacant. And I don't care. He has no motivation. Uh, what else here? Put in here. Um, I don't even want to 
say that dude dead, dead lead really because he wants too high. We can follow up with him in about three months, but he's really nothing nothing cooking there to be honest. And we're moving on. So any other questions, comments, concerns before I get up out of here and do some more woke stuff? Any other questions on the lessons? That's some good tea. That tea right there need to be in somebody's bottle. Like a warming bottle. Like matter of fact, I think you could make that tea. Right? Same formula. Put it in a bottle, but put it in a microwavable bottle. With instructions. You buy the tea, you get the tea, you put it in the microwave for 30 seconds, and it's perfect. Instant tea in the microwave. Already pre-bottled in a microwave safe bottle. I mean, is that something somebody came up with, or am I just being futuristic, or maybe I'm late? Maybe they already got this. I don't know. But that's some good tea. I'll tell you that. Especially with these floating little lemons. So I'm about to roll, y'all. I will catch you on the next one. Follow me on all social media outlets at Chris Monroe STL. That's Snapchat, that's Twitter, that's Instagram, that's Facebook, that's YouTube, that's TikTok, that's Clubhouse, and Fanbase, and X. Chris Monroe STL. What up, real estate rod? I'm closing it down. Do what you do. Be who you be. And I'll see you before you see me. Good night.